In this video we're going to talk about interval training. And we've talked about it in other videos, but I want to give you a more detailed explanation. So this is essentially high intensity, high intensity work followed by lower intensity let's just say work or rest interval so it all depends on what your what type of interval training you're doing so lower intensity work or rest and I'll explain that in just a second so this is good for anaerobic training good for aerobic aerobic training and for anaerobic training these would be all out all out effort followed by a rest interval and this rest you could completely stop you could walk you could jog. A lot of times with anaerobic intervals, you completely stop and rest or just try to walk it off and clear out some of the lactic acid before you start again. So we're, we're going at max here if we're talking about heart rate. So you're trying to get as high of a heart rate as you can and all out effort or you're going for as hard as you can go for a certain distance and then you would walk it off towards the end to kind of rest and let the lactic acid clear out. For aerobic training you might train at a high percentage of your max heart rate or your estimated max so we might train at 90 to 95 percent of our estimated max heart rate and uh, set our lower limit a little higher than it normally would so 60 to 70 percent for our lower limit and we would try to train at this higher interval maybe for time or for distance and then rest at this lower interval to try to um, allow that lactic acid to filter out or be buffered so for aerobic training it's a little different than anaerobic training in that you would never stop you would just always keep going for a specified period of time so you never stop here because you want to make sure it stays aerobic and rest interval for aerobic training is extremely important um, typically your rest is not going to last any more than 10 to 15 seconds depending on what time or what type of event you're going to do uh, normally you never want to go more than 30 seconds so the rest time interval is extremely important for aerobic events to get your performance improvement this type of training is used to improve your anaerobic threshold so anaerobic threshold I'm also going to put lactate threshold and essentially these measure the same thing so we wanna, we're concerned with onset of blood lactate accumulation and I'm not going to spell it all out these are ways of measuring onset of bl blood lactate accumulation. So that point at which the lactic acid builds up in the blood that's going to start causing fatigue and it gets higher than normal limits. This one is measured using expired CO2. So you'd be measuring VCO2 relative to how much oxygen you're taking in. And we'll have a video about that later. And it's a little bit more complicated than I, than I just described but we'll get into that later and this one lactic lactate threshold is using a blood test so here we're using a metabolic cart non-invasive just measuring that VCO2 and here we're doing a blood test a little bit more invasive so let's talk about how you would use heart rate to do interval training and it's something that anybody can do any mo most people can afford a heart rate monitor 
And the reason I encourage you to get a heart rate monitor is it's probably one of the best ways to determine intensity, cheapest ways too, to determine intensity when you're doing your cardiorespiratory training or your aerobic training. So this one's going to be based on time. So this is time. Write that down here. Time going in this direction. And heart rate in this direction. And you've, you've seen some of my other videos about setting your estimated max heart rate and training zones. This will all make sense. If it's new to you, it should still make sense because it's pretty easy to, to understand. So there's my heart rates. And let me set, let's set it with a different color my anaerobic threshold which is what we were just referring to and if you need a better explanation of this I have a video covering anaerobic threshold and lactate threshold and kinda the differences between them but essentially they measure the same thing so one's just non-invasive one's invasive so there's my anaerobic threshold so threshold so anything below that line is going to be aerobic. So the aerobic system can supply enough energy to keep you going. Anything above that line, the anaerobic system has to kick in and help out the aerobic system to supply enough energy to keep you going. Anytime that happens, lactic acid is going to accumulate Anytime you use glycolysis, lactic acid is going to accumulate. So anything below this line, let's say I, I start training and I stay below 160 and I'm good. I don't have to use the anaerobic system. Lactic acid is not going to build up. But this is how interval training works. Let's say I'll start off and I go up here above my lactate or anaerobic threshold. So I would go up until I can't take it anymore or for a certain period of time and drop down. Notice how each time I'm going up they're going a little higher. That's a form of pyramid training. Oops. So just like in weight training where you have reverse pyramid and pyramid you have the same thing in interval training. You're just increasing the intensity either starting off lower and going higher or starting off higher and going lower. So when we start off lower and go higher that's going to be our pyramid. So that's one form of interval training. You also have timed intervals. So my highest intensity would let's say be for one minute and my lower intensity might be for 30 seconds and then I just keep repeating that. I try to maintain my high intensity for one minute and it could be set, let's say, let's set it at 180 and then my lower intensity would be set at 140 and each time I get there I just get to 180 and I try to maintain it for one minute and then I would drop back down to 140 and hold it for 30 seconds and I would keep repeating that for let's say 20 minutes or so. So that's a timed interval. You also have something called a fartlek method. Fartlek method. Swedish for speed play. And it essentially means train how you feel. So just go off feeling. So train how you feel. So I would train at my upper inter interval. I'm just going to draw it out here and maintain it. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I can't take any more. I'm going to drop back down here and recover. And once I feel like I'm recovered, I go back up. And I hold that for as long as I can. And then I drop back down. Oh, I've got to recover. So you just keep these upper intervals for as long as you can take it. And you keep these lower intervals. As soon as you feel like you're recovered, you try your upper interval again. So that's the fartlek method. So there are several different ways of doing interval training and they're all to improve your anaerobic or lactate threshold. 
these could be based off a of percentage of VO2 max but in order to find out what your true VO2 max is or get a really good estimate of it you're going to have to have access to a metabolic cart there are ways of doing it with formulas but they're not even close to being exact so it would be better to use a metabolic cart if you're at a college or a university that has one so in this one we went over interval training and how it's used in anaerobic and aerobic training and really the main difference here is with our anaerobic training you could completely rest if you wanted to aerobic training there should be no rest the rest interval you should be still at a fairly high percentage of your estimated max but enough to allow you to recover enough for you to get back down into this aerobic zone so up here you're in that anaerobic zone and then down here you're in this aerobic zone so you can help clear oxygen and we talked about the difference between anaerobic and lactate threshold and how they essentially measure the same thing just one is less invasive than the other and here we showed you how to train using various forms of interval training so this represents a pyramid here building up and if I just had that reverse that would be a reverse pyramid we also talked about timed intervals how you set your upper limit at a certain time and your lower limit at a certain time and we talked about the fartlek method which is essentially train how you feel I will say this though before I end the video the fartlek method tends to have very high performance improvement and I, I don't know if it's just because people push themselves and they lower their rest interval and increase their high interval but for some reason it has much more improvement than other forms of interval training so I hope this explains interval training to you and ties in anaerobic and lactate threshold and how you can use it for anaerobic training and aerobic training and I'll see you in the next